All right. Right, so we have two, two sessions, right? And I don't know how many of you have been able to go on to model current issues. Okay. Have you seen what's on current issues? No. Right, there are two sessions there. You, you go right to the bottom of the page, the current issues page. And every one of my resources has my name on it. says Dr. Controller got a PhD. That's mine. At the bottom, there are blue folders. And in each folder, there is a presentation and a lot of readings. OK. Right, I'll show you. Right, so this is what we have, right? And uh, this is the mood we want. You're looking for level six. Where are we? Here. We keep going. Here. Oh. Right, I need to go up. Right, so this is the current issues you're looking for, right? Okay. And if you scroll right to the bottom, once you start seeing these blue folders, these are your sessions for the whole year. Right, including assignment guidance, everything is there. All right? Any questions? Right, so this first session is session 1A, and then we have session 1B after break. Okay. Right. Okay, now the purpose of today's session is just to introduce you to the module. How many of you were in the session at 9 a.m. today? Oh, just a few of them. Right, okay, if you are not in, uh, then you missed a lot. And make sure you buy these people some, something before they can give you the information. Find out what wines they drink. Because you will need that information. Right. You will need that information for your assignments, every assignment, including the dissertation. Okay, I'm not going to repeat what I taught you. Otherwise, there's no value to come in. It's not a time, though, not a half time, because I got bored at the half time. Yep, nine o'clock. Yes. Okay, is that okay? Right, introduction to current issues. Shall we get started? There's a lot to cover. Now, we have just one focal point today, and that's to identify and examine key current issues in the sector. Right, there's a difference between current issues and key current issues. Now, we will try and distinguish between the two. What I'm mostly interested in for this particular module are the main ones. Now, probably you are going to ask, what are the main current issues? It's up to you to argue which ones are the main ones. Because the main current issue for me may be different to the main current issue for Tony, right? We all have our own takes on what a current issue is. All you need to do is to defend your position that the issue you have chosen is current and it is a main one. Okay, right. And then the assessment has to do with your ability to demonstrate sufficient understanding. There's a difference between understanding and sufficient understanding. What I'm looking for is sufficient understanding. Because if it is not sufficient, if it, if it is insufficient, what it means is you will not have met the learning outcomes. 
So sufficiency is very, very important. Demonstrate sufficient understanding of key current issues. Again, that word is recurring, key, main, major, the most significant current issues. So somewhere in your assignment, you will need to demonstrate or to argue why the issue you have chosen is major, why it is important, why it is significant, right? Demonstrate sufficient understanding of key current issues, their influences. When you talk about influence, we are interested in to what extent does that current issue affect the sector. And you need to break down the sector into components. And by components, we are talking about elements. By elements, we are talking about what it is that constitutes current issues, um, I mean the sector. So we have our sector here, right? So are you all okay with red? Anyone offended? No? Okay, <laughs> right. So by the sector, what are we talking about? What does sector mean? Like what? Where you work. Okay. So, shall we call that settings? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. What else? The industry. The industry. The yep. Who is in this sector? Right. Let's start from, okay, in, in order of importance, from the most important to the least. Children. Exactly. Right, one thing I always emphasize when we are doing this uh, program, whatever module it is, is remember this degree is called BA Honors Childhood Studies. So an assignment on this program, that does not mention children, childhood, or child, any variation of the word, that assignment is deficient and should not pass. Okay? Whether it's a global perspective assignment, you have to mention children somewhere. Or a dissertation, the child must appear somewhere. Otherwise, what's the point of doing the degree? Okay. So we need to talk about the children. And at the center of everything that we do is that child. Have you done Bronfenbrenner? Yeah. Ah, okay. What do you know about Bronfenbrenner? <coughs> So you have the child right in the centre, yeah. yes. and then you have the family, community, and yeah. it expands like that. Brilliant. Right, so we'll talk about uh, more about this, children or child, okay, it's okay there. Right, who else is in the sector? Now all these, right, are what we call stakeholders, they have a stake in the sector. That's the broad term, right? So if you find, if someone asks you who are the stakeholders in our sector, this is the list you should come up with, okay? Now, you obviously are not going to write about all these. If I were to ask you to choose a few that are 
very important. Which would you select? Yeah. Child. Child. Can you tell me your names, please? Ayla. Ayla, thank you. Right, so the child is the main one. So we would say this is number one. Yeah. Right, by order of importance. Who else? My family. Immediately followed by family. Right, and? Practitioners. Yes, we are practitioners here. Okay. And? Community. Community. Okay. Settings. Settings. Okay. Is that it? I think that would be enough. I think. Now the government can come in here and there once you start talking about your legislation, your children act 1989, children act 2004, child care act 2006, and so on and so forth. The UIFS, ECM 2003. Legislation is connected to the government. Yeah? Right. So do not forget these stakeholders. Right. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. Now we have four learning outcomes. The first three, which is three quarters of the module, have to do with assignment one. And the last one is assignment two, that's your exam. All right? Now the first learning outcome says assess the possibilities for developing practice that meets the highest ethical standards. So in your first assignment, you will at some point have to be uh, talking about ethics, right? Ethics, ethical standards. We're going to talk about ethics um, in this session and in the second session. And the second learning outcome is critically evaluate <coughs> the idea of diversity. Now, please note, diversity is being considered an idea, right? It's a conception, it's a construct, it's a concept, it's a notion, right? Now, diversity is an idea that is applied to children's services and consider what it means in practice. So you are expected to link theory to practice. When you talk of idea, we are on the theoretical side. When you talk about uh, what you do in your setting, we are on the practical side. So we have idea and then we have practice. You have to marry the two, make the links between uh, the idea and the practice, between the theory and the practice, all right? And then you have ba -ba 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 -ba. Learning outcome three, critically discuss the notion of quality. Again, notion is synonymous with idea, okay? The notion of quality, quality is in quotes. So why do you think quality is in inverted commas? <coughs> why is it in inverted commas? People have different perceptions of quality. Excellent. It means what it means to whoever is talking about it, right? So my understanding of quality is different to your understanding of quality. What is the name again? They. They, right. So this understanding of quality will be different to mine, okay? That's why we all choose different things, right? People choose to be married to different spouses, okay? If someone else sees someone else's spouse, they think, oh, what, what happened here? And that other person is actually happy with them, okay? Um, same applies to the decisions we make. When you make a decision, some people may actually wonder what you are thinking, but you are perfectly happy with your decision. So quality is a subjective experience or subjective perspective of something, the value of something, whether or not it's fit for purpose. Right? That's why that word there is in inverted commas. It's because it does not have one universally accepted meaning. We talk about that um, in due course. 
right, in terms of children's services and the criteria used to assess good provision. Now, what I have to say at the onset is, once you start talking about good provision, there's one animal you should not forget. What is the name of that animal? Good provision. Who is the regulatory authority? Yeah, that's the creature we're talking about, Ofsted. Yeah. There is an acknowledgement that everyone has a different take on what good provision is. So, for there to be consistency across different settings, across different individuals, across uh, different stakeholders, right? For there to be consistency in this country, we must have some kind of uh, unifying voice on what quality is. Your go-to place for questions to do with quality. And Ofsted come up with um, a set of criteria for what it means to provide uh, something that, that, can, that can be considered good, right? Provision is good if it meets the following criteria. And they talk about diversity, children's experiences, sense of belonging. Um, you, you can think of the principles in uh, the EYFS, a uh, unique child, and so on and so forth, ECM, and the whole lot, right? What are Austin trying to do there? They are trying to make a subjective concept objective. They're trying to, to, to make it objective so that when we say this is an outstanding setting, right? An outstanding setting in Manchester should have a consistent provision to an outstanding setting in, in London, regardless of differences in children who are attending those settings, regardless of differences in uh, people who are running those settings. Is that achievable? No. No. Why? Even if you have a set of criteria, right? Those criteria are subject to interpretation. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> they also have focuses and values and opinions, even. Yes. So they're still subject to, to interpretation, right? Oh, by the way, uh, this is not singular. Criteria is many, many criteria. What is the singular for that? Right, two criteria. What if it's one? What is it called? Ah. Okay, I've heard people say, oh, criteria. No, that's wrong. <laughs> criteria is many, criterion is one. Okay, yeah. If you're going to write, if you're going to use this word, make sure you use it correctly. Otherwise, I'll be offended. Are you right, Yeah. Okay. Are we okay with the three learning outcomes? Yeah. Right. So that's for your first assignment. I will give you uh, sufficient assignment guidance. We talk about everything, including sentence construction, paragraphing, conclusion. We've covered the introduction already. We're not going to repeat that, right? So we will look at everything, and that's when we are going to get into the detail of those three learning outcomes. Now, the second assignment is actually an exam. It's coming week beginning the sixth of January, after your Christmas. That's when you're going to write your exam on. On the tenth, the Friday. Yep. Right. Critically evaluate a current policy or practice issue in terms of the impact it has on a setting in which you, when it says they, it means you have recent experience. Okay. 
Um, now, what I've said previously is there's no way in which you are going to discuss policy without discussing practice. Because the only way in which you can judge whether or not policy is working is looking at practice, right? And there's no way in which you can discuss practice without referring back to policy. Because practice is influenced by policy. There's nothing we do in our settings uh, that is not consistent with policy. So, even if you're going to talk about a policy issue, you end up talking about practice. Even if you're going to write about a practice issue, you end up also writing about policy. So what I've said to students, you pick your own policy that you want to use in the exam, you submit it, and then in the exam, you are going to be handed your policy as one of your readings, okay? Now, one, one policy, yes, and then you have other readings that I will have selected for you to use as well. It's a senior exam, so you get your reading. I can't remember what it says in your module handbook. Is it two or four weeks before? Four, four weeks. Four weeks. Does it say four? Yes. Yeah, four yeah. weeks prior to the exam. So four weeks prior to the exam. So you have sufficient time to actually prepare for the exam. And it makes sense to have the math. It seems to be sent to have the math. 25%. 25. The exam is 25. Yeah, the exam is 25%. So if by Right, if, if at all you get 100% in the first assignment, right, what it means is overall you have 75, so you may just come into the exam, write your name, submit the name, and cover. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is the assignment question. What does summative assessment mean? Summative assessment. Yeah, it, it summarizes, yeah. So summative assessment is assessment of learning. It's trying to measure how much learning has taken place, right? Formative assessment is assessment for learning, which means it's assessment meant to promote learning. Formative assessment is what happens during lessons. When you say something, you say, oh, that is correct, expand on this, and so on. You are getting instant feedback. It's formative, i.e., it's assessment you are using for your learning. And at the end of the module, you get summative assessment, which summarizes what you've learned, but more importantly, it is trying to measure how much learning is taking place in your head. Okay. Right, so what we have here is say, select a specific political current issue, right? What I've always argued is almost every issue, if not all issues, right, will have a political element to them, right? Any issue that you may think of will have a political side to it. Whether you're looking at children's mental health, there's a political argument, right? Actually, the government, once the government starts getting involved in the issue, it becomes a political issue. So almost everything that you're going to write about has a political element to it. But it's up to you to say why your current issue is political, right? So specific, that, that it has to be specific. So if it is vague, then you are not meeting with any outcome. It's got to be specific. Now, when you say mental health, have to say children's mental health, so it's specific, okay? Don't just say it's poverty, right? Childhood poverty or something to that effect. Make sure it is specific, right? Specific political kind of issue that is directly related to your practice. I will answer to say almost every issue that I've had you mentioned, I mean the examples that, that I've had so far, are specific and relevant to, to, to practice, okay? It's got to be something to do with children, that's all we're saying. Uh, critically evaluate how valuing diversity is achieved 
So you will need to define diversity. Right, so the key terms will be diversity. That's one of the terms. Uh, quality is another one. And ethics is the last one. Critically evaluate how valuing diversity is achieved, how quality and good provision is conducted, and assess the possibility of meeting high ethical standards within this current issue area. So there are three things you are doing there. You do not have to treat them separately. You can actually successfully treat everything in one block. When you talk about uh, quality, you may also then venture into ethics and then diversity. We'll discuss this in greater detail in due course. All right? There is going to be a developmental interview. It's not an interview. It's one day, one to one, where we'll be discussing your your current issue. I've already started, right? Uh, having these conversations with, with students from the Monday group. Uh, I think I've seen them with about two or three students so far. Now there's a date there, which is on your is the assessment calendar, right? What's the date there? Now, that's the deadline, right? Now, deadline it doesn't mean that everyone has to be seen on that day. You can actually come in here. If you know your current issue, if you are comfortable with your current issue, you can actually see me earlier than that day. But you can't see me after. Okay? Just like in assignments, you have a deadline. It doesn't mean you have to submit on that date. You can actually submit earlier than that day. Okay? So as soon as you are comfortable with your current issue, so I want you to think about your current issue throughout the next seven days. As soon as you are comfortable with it, see me either email me or come for a one-to-one and we'll discuss your current issue. The main purpose of those one-to-ones is to actually establish whether or not your current issue will enable you to sufficiently address the three learning outcomes. Some current issues are stronger than others. If you are going, for example, to pick Brexit, Right. It's difficult to write about Brexit because we don't know yet what's going to happen. All people are talking about now, when it comes to Brexit, is pure speculation. We will only know what the impact is after Brexit has happened. Then we can say, oh, this is the impact Brexit is having on our cities. Besides, there's very little published. Why? Because we haven't said any publication that is there about Brexit is these are projections, right? They are presenting different scenarios, worst case scenario. Uh, recently they produced the so-called Yellow Hammer paper. I don't know if you heard about it, which is talking about uh, how it's going to be difficult to, to get medicine in time. Um, lorries are going to be queuing <coughs> between the France and the UK, trying to get in, because uh, most of our medicines are coming from the EU, right? So for two days, those are going to be, the, the lawyers are going just to be stuck in the border. And what does it mean? Medicines have to be kept at a certain temperature and they deteriorate if that temperature is not maintained. So that's one thing they're talking about, how energy prices are going to go up. But this is speculation. This is not reality. We only know what reality is like after October the 31st if we don't get an extension. <coughs> Right? So what I'm saying here is it's difficult to write about Brexit and its impact on the sector because we are still in the EU. So that's not a good topic to choose. Okay? So that's one of uh, the reasons why we will need to have those one-to-ones, -one, every one of you, so that I can actually ask you how you intend to meet the three learning outcomes with your chosen current issue. Okay? If it is a risky topic, then I'll tell you, and you can change it in good time. So the earlier you come and see me, the better. Okay, if you want to write me an email, you can. Some students are write, actually writing emails and they're responding to those emails. They also constitute one-to-ones. It's called the virtual one-to-one. Okay. Right. But it is important that we have this two-way conversation. All right? I may think that your topic is not a good one, but if you convince me it's a good one, then I'll go with what you're saying. It's all about you being able to argue your point. Right? That's the whole purpose of an essay. Are you able to present your point 
and supportive. Okay. But the biggest job you have is convincing me. If I'm not convinced, then you stop. You have to change your mind. Okay. Right. Okay. Exam, we talk about it when it comes. Now, it is important to understand the best way to study childhood studies. I know some of you will be thinking, oh, why are we doing this now? Why not at level four when we started doing childhood studies? Better late than never. Okay, right, studying current issues, right? In the context of childhood, right? Now, the first thing you want to understand is what do we mean by current issues? What is a current issue? Things going on, causing problems. When are they going on? Right now. Because the, the, the word current is important. Yeah? Um, the other thing is um, when we talk about current, we don't mean new. The, 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 there's a difference uh, between current, right? So what we're saying here is current is not equal to new, right? It may be an issue that has been going on for a long time. If it's still happening now, even if it started having an impact 10 years ago, but if it's still going on, it is current. Current is to do with whether or not it's still ongoing rather than whether or not it is new. So, scratch that, we don't need new, we need current. Okay? Some of the issues you may choose may be new as well. Fine. But most of the issues I'm going to read about, I can actually uh, predict the kind of issues people will be writing about. Most of those issues will be issues that have been going on for some time, but they are still uh, yet to be resolved. Okay, as long as it is a current issue. And this um, has to do with your setting. Okay? In some settings, poverty is not the issue. Uh, yesterday, at uh, our Autonome campus, the students were saying, oh, we're in the private nursery and poverty is not exactly an issue. The issue we have is that of young children having technology like the tablets, the smartphones, what impact the smartphones and, and, and the tablets have on children's childhoods and social skills. That's the current issue which is relevant to that particular setting. It is a legitimate current issue, okay? So I want you to think of what it is that affects children in your particular setting that is current. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, will you tell me if it doesn't make sense? You won't fail. Just too much. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, how do you identify a current issue? What, what's your criterion? Am I okay to sit down? I'm not in the shot, am I? Something that is not weighing yeah, that that's not that's not working well, yeah. How else would you define the current issue? Everyone's too quiet. Is it because we're recording? Come on, make some noise. Negative impact, yes. Excellent. I need the help with names. Could it be failing with us led or not quite reaching good in that yep. spectrum? It may be an issue that is having an impact on that setting's performance on your offset metrics. <coughs> yeah. How else? You know, this is an opportunity for you to test your ideas. There's no wrong or right. What if, what if the children are covered? So like if there's an issue with the child. <coughs> yeah. Yep, 
What's up this well? Yes. Could you look at like the title of obesity? Yep. Yeah. That's a good example. Okay. Right. I will leave you to explore these issues. We will have an opportunity to discuss these issues. No, just to, to brainstorm what the, the likely issues are going to be. Okay. At some point today. Right. Now, the other thing that will help you choose a meaningful current issue is looking at what impact it's having. If it's not having a significant impact, you, you better not deal or, or you better not write about that issue because it's a non-event. We are looking at current issues which are having a significant impact. So another criterion for choosing a current issue is significant. How significant is it? To what extent is it having an impact? on children. Remember, our central figure of all those uh, players we have listed there, of all those stakeholders, our central one is the child. And then you expand from there. Okay. Right. Now, will I give you five minutes to discuss this in your little groups? No more than three people per group. Okay, there you go. List of questions. <laughs>